Hello everyone. I just wanted to make a quick video about 6.2 number 49 in the homework. Um, I know I got a lot of questions about that and thought I'd make a, a video to explain. Uh, hopefully this helps some of you out. So number 49, uh, the problem is asking to find the volume of the cap of the, this sphere. So the cap here has a height of h and the cap is coming from a sphere with radius r. So, you know, we don't know exactly what the radius of the bottom part of the cap is. Um, that's something that we might have to figure out if we wanted to, although it turns out we're not necessarily going to have to find that out here. Um, main thing we need to do is find the volume of this cap. Uh, a way you can think about this is you know, this 6.2 is all about cross-sections. If you can figure out a formula for the cross-sections of a solid, then basically you can integrate uh, all of the areas of the, the cross-sections, and that will lead you to the, uh, solid, the volume of the solid. So if we can think about uh, what the cross-sections of this cap are, then that can help us out. Well, one thing is the, the cross-sections of a sphere are going to be circles, right, or disks, uh, if you have it filled in. And so if we take uh, cross-sections that are horizontal for this cap, since the cap is up at the top and we make these horizontal cross-sections, each of those cross-sections are going to be um, circles or, or disks. So if we make another cross-section, it'll be another disk. So what we're going to do is try to come up with a formula <coughs> for the area of each of those disk cross-sections. One way to help is to put this on a 2D coordinate system, just to get a, an idea of what's going on here. Try to go from the, the 3D realm into the 2D realm. So if we put that sphere and kind of project it onto the uh, XY plane, it's going to look like a circle, and the radius would be r. So the cap is going to be just the top part of the circle. So that's what it would look like in 2D. <coughs> now what you could do is think about um, at a given, it just think about a given cross section and what that would look like in 2D. So uh, at some kind of y value, if you take a cross section, now that we've put it on a coordinate system, we can talk about there's a cross section at every uh, y value. Um, so cross sections are perpendicular to the y axis. So each y value corresponds with a cross section. And if we draw the picture of that cross-section in 2D, it's just going to look like that segment going from one side of the, the circle to the other side of the circle. All right, now we know that that represents in 3D some kind of disk, and it's really the, the filled-in disk um, that it's representing. And so our goal is to going to be to find the area of that disk as a function of y, because it's going to be a different disk for each value of y. So y's down here are going to have bigger disks, y's up here are going to have smaller disks. So we want to figure out what that is as a function of y. Well, we can start by thinking about the area, uh, sorry, the uh, formula for a circle with radius r. So this circle with radius r centered at the origin is going to be x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now if we're going to try to figure out um, so that's the, the overall circle, and that's going to help us get the, the uh, x-coordinates along this circle. Because if we're trying to find um, the, the area of these cross-section disks, cross-sectional disks, then we need to figure out what the radius of those disks are. So we need to figure out this horizontal distance from here along the y-axis out to here along the uh, circle. So we need to get an equation for that circle so we can get the x values of that circle as a function of y. So basically we can take that e the equation for the circle, solve it for x in terms of y, and we get x equals 
the square root of r squared minus y squared. Now technically there's a little plus or minus in front of it, but if we're just interested in the radius, we're, all we really need is the uh, x values that are along the right side of uh, the circle. So those are going to be the ones with the positive x values. So we can say that along the right side of the circle, the x values are given by the formula the square root of r squared minus y squared. So at a given y value, that's what these x values are So as a, as a function of y. Oops, I just realized you can't see any of that. <laughs> Let me scroll down a little bit. There it is. <laughs> a big head's in the way. All right. <laughs> Hopefully that helps now that you can uh, see what we're talking about. So, um, so then what we can do is uh, look at the radius, so the radius of these disks. Let me just draw one of the, the disks flat. So the radius of that disk is actually just given directly by those x values. If you look at the, the horizontal distance from the x axis from the y axis out to the circle on the right side, then um, the x value of, of that circle is equal to that radius length right there. Or you could think it's the right x value, which is the square root of r squared minus y squared, minus the left x value, which is just zero if you're on the y axis. So either way you figure it out, you end up with the radius of the disks, the cross-sectional disks, are given by the square root of r squared minus y squared. So then the area Sorry, I sneezed right before making this video, so I'm a little sniffly. Uh, the area of the disk is going to be pi times its radius, which is the square root of r squared minus y squared, squared, which is pi times r squared minus y squared. Remember, the, the little r is the radius of the sphere, the original sphere, but um, the radius of each of these cross-sectional disks is going to be something different depending on which cross-section you're looking at. And this is the formula that gets us the radius of those disks, the square root of r squared minus y squared, where y again is based on our the coordinate system that we set up. Okay, so then we, to find the volume of the cap, we integrate the area uh, from now here we'd have to figure out uh, where our limits of integration are, where we're going to have cross sections from and to. And it looks like uh, right here, since the height of the cap is h, if we start from the top of the cap, which is r, uh, and we go down h, that would be at r minus h. All right, so r minus h to r. This is like y equals r minus h to y equals r. So then we can go, we can take the pi out, we can integrate, we have r squared y minus y cubed over three. Remember that uh, <clears throat> here we're integrating with respect to y, so r squared is like a constant, and so when we integrate with respect to y, we just pick up a, a variable or letter of integration, a variable of integration. So we've got r, when we plug in the r into r squared y, we're going to get r squared times r, which is r cubed. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and then we plug in the r minus h. We have pi, and this is going to be 2r cubed over 3 minus, then we have distributing the r squared, r cubed minus r squared h minus, oh boy, we got to distribute this out. All right, so this is going to be r minus h squared uh, times r minus h. Let me write the r minus h squared here. So this is going to be r squared minus 2rh minus, or plus h squared. So if we multiply all that stuff out, I'm going to write the one third off to the side here. We're going to get r cubed minus 2r squared h 
plus r h squared minus r squared h minus 2 or plus 2 r h squared minus 8 cubed. Hopefully I got that right. All right. So then we have pi times 2. <laughs> Keep sniffling. <laughs> 2 uh, r cubed over 3 minus the quantity r cubed minus r squared h minus, let me distribute the 1 third. And actually, let me combine like terms first. So we have, I'll write this under here. We have uh, the r minus h cubed exploded into a bunch of terms. Let's simplify these terms and we get r cubed. Uh, let's see, we have minus 3r squared h. And then we have plus 3r h squared minus h cubed. OK, so we're going to get 1 third r cubed plus r squared h minus r h squared plus 1 third h cubed. Okay, Whew. so uh, let's combine like terms again. We've got an r cubed, 2r cubed over 3. Uh, we've got, ooh, some cancellation here, r squared h and r squared h minus r, oops, minus r h squared plus 1 third h cubed. Uh, looks like we've got some cancellation here too. Interesting. So this is going to be r h squared when the negative distributes minus one third h cubed. Okay, that's probably pretty good. I just did a quick check in the back of the book to see what they had written, and looks like uh, they wrote wrote it with the h squared factored out. And that works too. Uh, either form is fine. All right, well, I hope this video helped. Uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>